guys, my name is Courtney. Welcome back to my channel. So Booktubeathon happened at the end of July and the beginning of August, and I read so many books in Booktubeathon. I think I read six books in Booktubeathon, like four of which were in August. I am not going to be talk about any of those books in this video. I made a whole separate video about all the books that I read during Booktubeathon, and you can check out that vlog and that wrap up if you want to know my thoughts and opinions about those books. Besides Booktubeathon, I actually ended up reading a lot of other books. I read seven books this month, and it's still August um, 27th. No, it's August 28th as I filmed this, so I still have. 28th, the 29th, 30th, and 31st. So that's four days. I am moving on the 31st to Boston. I am going to grad school. So like, I could end up getting a lot of reading done because I have free time and because I have a plane ride, or I could get no reading done because I'm trying to figure out stuff and move and pack and all that. It really could go either way with me. So I'm going to be just talking about all the books that I've read so far this month. The first book that I read this month, besides my Booktubeathon books, was Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. I started this during Booktubeathon, but I did not finish it. I got the audiobook for this on Audible with my Audible credit, not sponsored, and I was very lukewarm about this book. I thought the series was good. I thought the series had potential, but like it wasn't ever a series that I was really enraptured by like some people were, mainly because the main character drives me up a wall and I hate her. But besides that, this was definitely a setup book. It was just setting up things that need to happen for the finale. It happens, you know, we all have those books. A lot of people really hate setup books because they feel like they're unimportant or like, you know, just get to the main thing. I don't necessarily feel like that. I felt like a lot happened in here that needed to be explained and gone through, but like also I'm just like, I was bored. I just don't like a lot of like the plot points and like that's a personal thing. Like I just personally don't want the plot to go in some of the directions that it is. Again, that's like just personal things. Like I personally don't want to hear about these kind of issues, you know? So, I don't know. Like, as far as the writing, it was mediocre. Um, there were some lines that were cheesy and, like, overdramatic, but I definitely think it's improved from the first book. Honestly, this book, I read it so long ago, I can't even remember all my thoughts. I know I gave it, like, 2.5 stars, like, I really was, like, eh about it. It was just kind of a meh book all along. I don't really care. I just want to hear the ending. I know my biggest problem was the world building. I just felt like we needed more, like I don't really understand the world, I was confused. I feel like information is being withheld and like I just don't know everything. I don't know, it just doesn't feel fleshed out or explained well. I don't know why things are happening, they just are happening and I think it's good, I think it has potential, it's just not personally really for me and I can't really invest myself in it. So the next book that I read was The Dubliners by James Joyce. I only had to read like three more stories in here. I've been reading this for a while. I've read a couple stories like in high school classes and college classes. I had to pick this up for a college class but we like only read three stories in it so I'm just like so yeah, I can't put this on my shelf until I read every single story in here, and I finally did. I did have an audiobook to help me out. I don't think audiobook was the way to go with short stories, but like, it got me through them, so that's all I can say. I definitely need to reread some of these stories in classes with analysis. So yeah, some of these stories I didn't like, some of these stories I just didn't feel like I got. Um, I don't, like some of these stories I feel like I was skimming, I almost could understand the analysis part, I could almost get the thematic part out of it, but like I wasn't quite there, especially like as an English student, as a literary student, when like I can't understand like what the theme is or like I don't know what I would discuss in class with it. Like, oh, I just, I hate that feeling, I hate that feeling. I want to know what the story is trying to tell me. But The Dubliners does have my favorite short story of all time in here, which is The Dead, which is a five star story. Like I said, one of my favorite stories, if not my favorite story of all time. Yeah, so I gave it like a three stars. You know, I definitely need to reread some of the stories and like really go in depth with them. And like, I like James Joyce's styles. I like his literary techniques, but like, again, I don't always understand what he was trying to tell me, what he was trying to get at with some of these stories, but I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. I will say that. And I finally finished it and like that is the best feeling. When I've been reading a book like this for a long time, story anthologies take me forever. I've been reading a book like this for so long, it's been on my shelf, and like I finally finished it. Oh, it was such a good feeling. The next book I read was Nevermore. This is by Jessica Townsend. This is a middle grade that has been going around booktube and getting a lot of praise. It is a lot of people's like new favorite middle grade. I am not one of those people. I think I gave it a three 
star. A lot of people really like this book. I could see the appeal, but for me it just didn't work. I felt like a lot of the world and stuff was really forced. I thought a lot of the characters were kind of forced. I feel like it was trying to be this whimsical magical thing, but like it just wasn't working for me. Like it was trying too hard to be unique and special, but like it really wasn't. The world building was really weak. Like I just didn't understand this world or like how things worked. It was weird because it was a magical world set inside another magical world. So it wasn't like Harry Potter where it's a magical world hidden within ours. It was like a hidden magical world hidden inside another magical world and both of them were never really explained. Like I didn't understand the difference between the world she comes from and the world she goes to. I didn't know what the similarities between those worlds were, what the differences were. It just felt like a lot of world building was left out and I was just like confused about the rules, um, you know, what was different. Like, things were not really well explained or fleshed out. I had fun with the plot and the main character and the other little side characters and stuff. Like, it was fun. It was a nice ride. But, like, in a lot of ways, I just don't feel like it was that great. Like, it just didn't do things well. There's a lot of books and a lot of, um, children's middle grade and fantasy that can get away with not having heavy rules set on the fantasy worlds, but, like, it has to be done in a certain way, and I don't think it was done well in this book. I enjoyed this. I'm gonna read the second book, but, like, I don't think it is as good as people have been saying it is, and that's disappointing because I love middle grade. I really, really love middle grade, especially good middle grade, but this, this does not get up there in my good middle grade list. The next book I read was Wild Beauty by Anna Marie Macklemore. This is a magical realism book following a group of Latinx women who, like, are cursed to live on this land, they can't leave, and all their lovers die. It's magical realism-y because they can, like, make flowers sprout out of the ground, like, they have magic flower powers. It's pretty great. I don't know why, but, like, at the end of summer, magical realism books just are, like, a really big thing for me. I gave this a 3.75 stars, so it wasn't, like, a perfect book. I didn't love it, love it, love it. At the beginning of reading this book, I really, really enjoyed it. It was, like, slow moving and just nice. The writing was really beautiful. It was atmospheric. It just pulled me in. I really enjoyed the characters and just like the magic and the world. It was just so nice. But somewhere along like the 200 page line the story just felt like it was dragging and like as beautiful as the writing was like at one point like I was just done. Like I couldn't read anymore and it was just like too much. So yeah I really enjoyed this book. The characters, the world, the magic but like it wasn't perfect for me and it did drag on a little bit. So now we're gonna get into the graphic novels I read this month. I read Fence Volume 1. Oh my goodness, I've been waiting for this book to come out since I heard about it. I am, so, I was so excited to get this and it was just as good as I imagined and wanted it to be. It's like a sports anime kind of. Like there's this fencing high school team, the main character is this rookie wannabe with a tragic backstory and then there's his roommate and of course they have an aunt antagonistic relationship because he's like this amazing fencer, you know, at this like little school. Why is he at this little school? Blah blah blah. It reminds me a lot of Haikyuu. I don't know, I love team sport books. Like, I just, I love them so much. I can't get over them. I just love like camaraderie. Like, I can't. This book was everything I wanted it to be except longer. Like, it was so short and I'm, I'm done and I have to wait until January to get the next volume unless I want to collect single editions and like, I can't. I can't do single editions. But yes. This is so good. If you love Haikyuu, if, if you love um, the Foxhole Court series, like if you love any of that, this is for you. It's so good. I just can't get over it. I just, I can't. It's fencing. It's just, it's so good. Boarding school. Just, it's everything I like. The next book I have is Yona the Dawn, volume 13. If you've been on my channel before, I am a big Yona fan. I'm a big Yona theorist. As much as I love the beginning art, like I talk about how much the art is like so good for Yona, like it's so different and good, but like the art has improved so much from volume one and I can't believe it because of how much I loved it in the first volumes. This is one of my favorite manga series of all time, if not my favorite manga series of all time. It is a shoujo um, girl series, like we have this main 
badass female protagonist. It's like a fantasy um, warrior kind of princess series. Like, it's just so good. The art is amazing and beautiful. The characters are so good. There's so much good character development and character exploration in this series. I just can't get over this series and how much I love it. And like, I'm never going to stop collecting it because it's just it's so, so good. Ugh, it's just such a good series. And if I haven't convinced you by now to watch, like, watch it or read it, like, I'm doing something wrong because it's so good. The next book that I have is Cardcaptor Sakura. This is the clear card arc. And of course they're going to be doing stuff outside when I need to film, you know. So this is the continuation of the Cardcaptor Sakura series that I finished last month. This is, like, the reboot series or the continuation that they started doing um 20 years after the original. They also have an anime out now. I don't know if I'm going to continue reading with these and keeping up with them. First I'm going to watch the anime and see how like long the anime is. I don't know if it's getting a second season or not. It's like a classic shoujo anime girl series. The characters, the art, the story, everything is just pure and wonderful and it just makes you feel good. But like, I had to buy this, it's like special. Um, I should probably do a whole video about anime and my personal anime choices and taste, especially because I just made a my anime account list. Like, yeah, I'm so late on that. So yes, I cataloged all my anime finally into, I had it in a Google Doc and I finally put it on the my anime list, which if you don't know, my anime list is like the Goodreads of the anime world. If you want to hear about all the anime that I've ever watched, like let me know in the comments down below i'd love to do a video about that for you but let me tell you it's over a hundred animes so it's a long list i don't know there was a time in my life when i decided that i needed to read and watch all the shoujo animes and mangas out there and like i was very successful like i've pretty much watched every popular or well-known shoujo anime and some unpopular ones and some not well-known ones so if you ever want to hear about that let me know in the comments. I would love to do a video about it because I have an extensive knowledge of shoujo mangas and animes. Those are all the books that I've read so far in August. Um, the book I'm currently reading is Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Not very far, as you can see. I've only read, like, almost 200 pages of this. It's like a 600-page book. I'm trying to read this before I go back to college because it's a big chunky book and I don't want to carry it. The last week before college is hard because, you know, I'm traveling from the west coast to the east coast so I have to do all the packing, but I'm also trying to get a lot done before I leave. I'm trying to visit my favorite places before I leave. I'm trying to read as many books as possible before I leave. I'm trying to be productive, get out videos, just do all the stuff. I have like a big TBR list for myself for this week, like of books that I wanted to finish, but I don't think I'm going to get through them, especially because I'm reading this and it's going to be a little bit to finish this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys later and happy reading.